Yeah, feed the chicks. The chicks need feeding. It's time for some Type 40, a little extra Type 40 for you here on the Spacebook channel with me, Dan Hardley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks, and my very attractive Easter hat. Yes, it's got colder out there all of a sudden, so I'm protecting the old the brain cells. Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd get on screen and talk to you for a little while about what's been going on over the last couple of days. But before I do, happy Easter. I hope you all had a good week, good weekend, getting stuck into some eggs and all the rest of it. And thank you so much for all the uh, interaction we've had from you over the last week or so since we dropped our big Easter extravaganza show, Type 40 Live. We did the big Easter parade, didn't we? That was a lot of fun. We had the show somewhat overran, but then again, it always does. Obviously, this week just gone, for some of the Doctor Who community, it was still uh, a red letter day because they dropped a brand new episode of Doctor Who, didn't they? Starring Jodie Whittaker and Mandip Gill and produced by uh, showrunner Chris Chibnall. Notice the reception to it. See, I haven't seen it yet, everybody. As of time of recording, I haven't seen the episode yet. And I'm not entirely sure when I will. I mean, why spoil, <laughs> why spoil a good evening? with uh, having to sit through uh, 50 minutes of Chris Chibnall stuff. But yeah, obviously we've got a review from the podcast, so that is coming up. Don't you worry about that. But yeah, what I wanted to talk about was not so much the episode itself <laughs> as what came afterwards, because this is something that I've noticed that happens a lot with Chris Chibnall. It happened at Christmas with the, uh, with the New Year's Day special, didn't it? When they put that out, nobody was talking about Eve of the Daleks at all. All anybody was talking about really was uh, was the trailer, the trailer that came after it, because it, it revealed, didn't it, that, uh, that the Sea Devils were coming back for that Easter special for Legend of the Sea Devils. So he's, he seems to have gone and done it again, doesn't he? Because in the wake of this latest special, I'm not finding too many people that are actually speaking about Legend of the Sea Devils itself. Realistically, this should have been it should have been a roaring special, shouldn't it? Legend of the Sea Devils. And all attention should have been on the thrills and the spills that were contained within that. But that's not how it, uh, that's not how it went down in the end. Now, you already know by now, if you're not strange to this channel, that um, in the run up to this, I'd speculated about how much damage it was possible that even an incompetent, like Chris Chibnall could uh, could inflict on this intellectual property. It's only, you know, that last special that's coming up, it's probably only going to be 70, 75 minutes at the most, I'd say. And, and we all know that the, the definition, what they label now as a special, and what we used to consider to be a special, you know, they're, they're two different things, aren't they? How much damage can any showrunner do? And in the hands of a normal showrunner or writer, I'd say probably not that much. It'd be a negligible amount. But this is Chris Chimler we're talking about. This is the man who gave us the timeless children, isn't it? And really, anything is possible. And sure enough, some of my greatest fears, and I say this softly, some of my greatest fears have been confirmed because once again, Chris Chibnall seems to have made a creative beeline for my childhood and maybe yours too, with the biggest revelation about what's to come in that centenary special. Now, it has to be said that Doctor Who fandom, you know, we are loyal, aren't we? And we, uh, we're affectionate to the, the people, the actors and actresses, and indeed the writers, producers and directors that we term Doctor Who legends. And these two women are no exception. Sophie Aldrin and, Aldred and Janet Fielding are both returning to Doctor Who for this centenary special, which hasn't got an air date yet. And uh, I can say now that these two companions, Ace and Tegan, are probably my two favourite Doctor Who companions from when I was growing up, when I was most into the show and part of the, of the fandom. So I don't begrudge either of those actresses a chance to return to this and I accept I'm supposed to be happy about it. But obviously Chris Chibnall has rode roughshod over my childhood. He's yanked away my connection and maybe yours too with this great mythology and, and substituted the, I'd say probably one of the greatest beginnings of any TV series of any kind, let alone science fiction and fantasy, substituted that 
all this cobbled together load of old tat and identity politics all coming from inside his tiny tiny brain <laughs> we we are nearly at the end i'm pleased to say we're nearly at the end of it of it all uh, but before we uh, before we get there we've got this one final special to to sit through we've got a press release from this now this is from the this is from the bbc themselves so it said the episode to be shown in the autumn will feature a dramatic encounter we've heard that before chris haven't we've heard that before a dramatic encounter between the doctor and three of his most feared foes his hers whatever yet yeah, namely the the daleks the cybermen was this is the master as played by sasha dewan the long-suffering sasha dewan whatever they give him to do he does seem to give his best but uh, yeah the timeless children kind of sour this incarnation of the master for me despite his sterling work in spy Four, maybe we'll get some more of that from him but i can't help but feel my instincts are it's going to be another ringmaster style performance where he'll be narrating what's going on rather than actually giving us anything approaching a proper performance so we've got that to look forward to maybe or maybe not i mean there we see a picture here on screen they've issued a, a handful six or seven maybe promo pics for this special already and it's not just any cyberman we've got ash out the lone cyberman there from series 12 who again quite a well-realized character i thought that chris Chibnall completely pissed up the war just as he has several times before and since i'm, I'm thinking of, of swarm in particular so so there's that there's nothing really to get excited about this but uh, yeah we've got a little more information here it says uh, jody's final feature length story contains a plethora of treats <laughs> a plethora of treats that's a very chris Chibnall kind of word isn't it and surprises for audiences and fans not to mention the return of two of the most beloved companions in the show's history they're helping the doctor fight on three fronts against her deadliest enemies in one huge story for the bbc centenary we'll be celebrating the past the present and the future of doctor who in a fittingly thrilling epic and emotional send-off for the 13th doctor well we're celebrating the past and the, and the present celebrating so i think i think the celebrating aspect you know that very much remains to be seen on past form but okay this is pretty much standard for a, for a, a blurb is it this is what we expect from the kind of morose media speak that we get served up with regularity but uh, yeah so this is janet fielding and sophie aldrin both returning to the story and uh yeah i think that these two companions seeing them on screen together obviously it does swirl up a lot of nostalgia for me i grew up watching these two women in these two roles obviously they were never on screen together at the time so there is a kind of weirdness about about seeing them there how did they come to be maybe working together cooperating they're clearly very comfortable and they've got sort of tech there's some tech around them there i can't work out exactly what it is maybe they have drones and whatever else it actually looks like the uh looks like the school canteen now come to okay okay we'll, we'll gloss over that okay so we've got a quote here from from janet fielding too she says uh, in some ways it was it was a very different experience to what it was like when i finished recording in 1983 but in many ways it was very similar it was so lovely to lovely to be a working member of the doctor who family again again sweet sweet uh words there from from janet fielding i thought and you know this is a this is a woman who has been involved in doctor who since 1980 when she made her debut alongside tom baker sarah sutton and matthew waterhouse in legopolis there and one of the longest standing of doctor who companions she remained almost throughout the entirety of tom baker's successor peter davison almost through the entirety of his run departing in resurrection of the daleks there and it was probably one of the most emotional send-offs in doctor who history it was very distinctive and the character left because she was sick of violence uh, and death as inflicted on her by by eric saywood <laughs> during his time on script editor there on the show uh yes yeah, so she hasn't been seen since i think we got uh no actually we didn't she wasn't in dimensions in time either Actually, I'm, I'm really happy for her i love this character i think janet fielding is a, a scream and uh yeah she's 
seems very happy to be involved with Doctor Who now. She'd go through a phase, didn't she, where, where it wasn't the case at all. But I, I do love that she's involved with Doctor Who fandom now. And uh, sure enough, the fandom, as you would expect, reached out to her. Uh, somebody's there writing the Legend of the Sea Devil special, a 7 out of 10. Be generous from what from what I hear. As she glosses over that and says that Chris Chibnall and Russell T said the fans would go wild. Hmm, maybe I thought I was trying to keep up and reply to people. Forget it. I can't. It's like an avalanche. So Janet's obviously been besieged with people wishing her well and, and happy to see her return to the show. And you, you know, I'm not gonna knock that. And she goes on here with people saying, I want to see Tegan in her old, colourful shorts and dresses. And she replies, Trust me, you don't. It's 38 years on. So we get a lot of, a lot of good natured gags there from Janet Field, of course, who, who could possibly forget if you were an adolescent during the eighties, Janet Fielding's various costumes there. That was <laughs> a lot of them are etched on the memory. You couldn't get more eighties than that, could you? But uh, yeah, in this one, we see the, uh, <laughs> we see Tegan side by side with Ace picking up arms. So well, I know a lot can happen in, in the best part of four decades but uh this is somebody who it stopped being fun for her she doesn't seem to have a problem there with dispatching whoever she's dispatching i suppose we'll find out where that's going to go in due course so that's that's janet she's back and uh alongside her we've got yes sophie aldred now so sophie aldred obviously played ace first appeared in dragonfire back in 1987 staying for the remainder of sylvester mccoy's run and uh Despite the fact that I think Sylvester worked quite well with Bonnie, I don't think any of them would mind us asserting that Ace is very much the Seventh Doctor's companion. It's unimaginable to think of, of uh, them apart in, in many respects. And so seeing her without him, even, even all these years on, because obviously Sophie's older now, but you, you, know, you can tell it's definitely her. She's still the way she, she's got a charisma about her, I think Sophie has and uh, a real grasp of who this character is which not all of the companions if they i'd say they probably all had them at the time for the most part but it's understandable that after a certain amount a certain number of decades that perhaps that's harder to reach harder to reconnect with maybe playing it on big finish has helped i i say it probably has come to think of it and Sophie says, it's been quite a challenge to have such a big secret to keep even from my family and i couldn't be more thrilled and excited to have been asked back I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I adored being part of the TARDIS team again. Yeah, yeah, there we are again. More, more nice words there from Sophie. Generous words. As keen as I am on these characters and these actresses, obviously this is going to be in a script by Chris Chibnall. And you can't help but wonder what indignities he's going to force onto these characters. What's he going to change about their backstory? Where have they been in the time in between? His own his own characters that he's created, he's not managed to tell us who Yaz actually is in three and a half years. So what can he possibly find to have to say extra that's going to be worth hearing about both Ace and Tegan that can't potentially damage all our memories and our connections from our childhoods to these icons? So yeah, there they are, as they are in, in 2022 or 2021 was when this was filmed. And there they were back in the day there as Ace and Tegan. And yeah, it's it's delightful to uh, to see them both again on screen. I just wish it was under slightly different circumstances. Let us know how you feel about that in the comments section. You know, have you met Sophie and Janet? And, and have you ever asked them whether they'd come back to it? Because I've got to be honest, I kind of expected Sophie to be back for this. There's just something about it, something about her involvement in writing at Childhood End. The Childhood's End, that book a couple of years ago, things that she said in the time in between. Now, she hasn't let the cat out of the bag, don't get me wrong. But yeah, this doesn't feel like a, a great surprise, I think, if you're looking at people that Chris Chibnall would look to bring back. And it, when, I was, when I saw this picture first, of course, I was drawn to the emblems there on Sophie's lapel. And I thought, oh, how cool is that? Production designer on this era of Doctor Who, it's Ray Holman. And He's had some successes and some and some spectacular failures. Now, this is the man who put together Jodie Whittaker's outfit, for heaven's sake. 
But I thought, oh, isn't that pretty cool? You know, the way that, you know, because obviously back in the in the day, Ace wore that bomber jacket, didn't she, with, with all the pins and patches and whatnot over it. And it's kind of fitting that somebody who later in life, maybe they're looking a little bit more professional, dressed to kill, just to add those little pins there on, on the lapel. It's just enough of the Ace that we remember that's made it through to adulthood. And then I looked a little bit closer and, and sure enough, those pins are actually connected to a very specific item of Ace's clothing from Remembrance of the Daleks here. That's the t-shirt that Ace wore in the, uh, I think it was in the second half of the episode because she, she changes halfway through, doesn't she? So that's the, that's one of her t-shirts there with a, a trombone, musical notes, was it a trumpet? I don't know. Something from the brass section anyway. So that's all there. And I think, well, what a nice touch. Again, well done, Ray. As, a, as an 80s fanboy, I, I think we've got to appreciate little little touches, little touches like that, haven't we? So yeah, it's a little bit of useless trivia, but fair play. Also confirmed to be taken to the screen for the Doctor's epic battle for survival are Vinda, again played by Jacob Anderson, and Kate Stewart. Still played by Gemma Redgrave. Now I do hope <laughs> back in the uh, back in her last appearance in Flux. It did look like she'd been given the script that morning, had no idea what was going on. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a special pack full of faces. And I don't think that that's going to be where it ends somehow. This is again written by Chris Chibnall, directed by Jamie Magnus Stone. So that's the good news. He's absolutely the best of the current crop of directors that are working on the show. And it does seem right, I suppose, that it, it's him. It's his, it's his lens that... Uh, shoots the final episode of it all but yeah what i am worried about is what they're holding back so if they've told us if they've told us about ace and tegan this early they must have something else in store and that can't help but worry me because there are other doctor who legends other doctor who characters that you don't want to see dragged into this really do you particularly as we've got another special coming up a short time later I cannot but be reminded that last year, last autumn, we did have this picture, didn't we, of three doctors of David Bradley, Colin Baker, and Sylvester McCoy. They were staying at the Holm House Hotel guest house. That is uh, just outside of Swansea, I think. I can't quite remember yet. It is in the general area. Of where they were filming last year and sylvester's also got a nice spanking haircut there colin minus the the beard that we're used to seeing him with i don't know i find it very difficult to believe that the three of those guys were there at the same time completely coincidentally let me know what you think is it possible that chris chibnall ha is going to bring those classic doctors to the screen and bring back David Bradley, who's just, just turned 80 years of age. Do you think that's possible? Do you think this is already sounding a little like too much? I mean, it'd be too much for any writer. Terence Dix struggled with keeping this many balls in the air, didn't he? And Chris Chibnall is no Terence Dix. So could it be that it's just going to be a flurry of activity and faces? Could it be just a, a deluge of those to make up for the fact that there's not going to be a great deal else going on? Just like the last couple of specials, people will be thinking about, well, what's coming next? I mean, there is one bright spot, obviously. We are going to get to see Jodie Whittaker's absolutely insufferable 13th Doctor regenerate. How she's going to depart, heaven only knows. And to, to be quite honest, do any of us really care as long as she goes? So, yeah, this is a mixed bag of announcements. I'm not entirely convinced that, this, that uh, the centenary of the BBC is uh, occasion enough to warrant doing any of this, particularly with the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who following just a year later. I don't, I, it's not that I don't think Russell T Davies can, can top Chris Chibnall. Of course he can. You know, this is a man who has considerably more refined, polished writing chops than Chibnall, yeah, yeah, yeah. But special after special after special, obviously we've still got to hope that the general public turn up to 
ideally both of these at least one i know which one we prefer because the the jody whittaker era is really for all intents and purposes it is over the book has already closed it's been a colossal failure so yeah we will be reviewing legend of the sea devils this latest special at some point on the podcast in the future you can guarantee you can guarantee that but we're in no particular rush there'll be more type 40 extra coming up soon in a few days time and uh, yeah keep an eye on the channel please like this video if you've been here this long and subscribe to the channel because you're going to want to pick up on what we drop next whether it is a review of actual doctor episodes could be a live stream a podcast could be a short video like this and we intend on being right on it as soon as it is announced yeah because the bbc have also said that they expect to be releasing the name of the person who's going to be playing the next doctor in the next few weeks so i'm not entirely sure where that's come from whether it's come from bad wolf or i wherever i just don't know but it has appeared on a BBC website now. And, and who is going to be the face? Who's going to be there at the controls of the TARDIS? Who, who's going to be stepping into the doctor's shoes? Is it going to be one of these people that's been speculated about over the last few months or a name that we're never going to see coming? We can only speculate some more. The speculation has been fun, but this has been the longest gap in between one doctor being announced as departing and another one being announced so i think we're all kind of over it by now it wouldn't at all surprise me for russell t davis to uh, keep us guessing actually as he said right the way through till next next october but maybe that is unrealistic maybe it'll get leaked maybe it's maybe some newspaper will threaten to leak it i think that's happened before I have, in fact i think that's what happened last autumn when we got that announcement that russell t davis was coming back i don't think they they initially intended us to find that out quite as soon as we did because obviously it completely stepped on flux okay yes so just a reminder the uh, type 40 doctor Who podcast is on all the podcatchers spotify audible apple podcasts pretty much anywhere you can get podcasts you can get the audio versions of the live streams and the podcast itself over there or on our home feed at type40.podbean.com we love podbean so easy to use even i can use it obviously there's type 40 live too that'll be back in the not too distant future for more live streams that'll be season five of the live streams looking forward to bringing it back yet again we're looking at ways we can tweak the format and move things up and down and around a little bit as the show continues to evolve and our conversations continue with you guys so let's know what you think of everything that i've been speaking about this time so about the centenary special about ace and tegan about the sea devils about the possibility of other doctors being in the mix too is that what he's holding back until, until much later in the day because even though chris chibnall thinks that he's really great at keeping secrets he's he is and he isn't so I, i'll be honest i was really surprised to see janet fielding there sophie aldred not so much so let's know what you think of all that in the comment section please like the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the cluster bell so you get the notifications about what we're doing next let's have a pretty picture before we go shall we this is uh a bit of art from Paul Burley on Twitter. So he he published this in the run-up to Legend of the Sea Devil. So this is one of the old Sea Monkeys adverts. If you were ever been a comic collector, American comic books, you might have seen an advert for something called Sea Monkeys in the back of those there. And uh, what Andrew, uh, what Paul's done, sorry, is he's recreated the look of that, the graphics, the font, and even the style of illustration. And he's dropped not just the Sea Devils there in the place of the actual Sea Monkeys, but we've got uh, you've got the castle behind which i think is the castle from the actual sea devil story that the master is uh, imprisoned in and we have the master joe grant and the third doctor there <laughs> looking into the bowl in wonder and it says copyright 1972 unit enterprises and lots of other little gags and wordplay dotted around in there so yeah go and follow paul burley on twitter there's lots of little art that he puts together like that fun ideas often based on 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 things that are retro so if you are a, a sea monster or a dinosaur you, know, you may enjoy seeing some of that some of that again okay yeah thank you for your time and uh, thanks for listening and watching we'll be back with more type 40 type 40 extra very very soon but yeah let's know what you think in the comics in comics section in the comments section i'll speak to you again later Bye bye